how can somebody build as much muscle mass as possible while trying to lose body fat at the same time without sacrificing muscle mass? Well, here's what's cool. There's, there's two ways to reduce your body fat percentage. So if you come to me and you're at, say, 25% and you want to get leaner, one way is to just go try and lose fat. Another way is to build muscle. So if the scale doesn't move, but I add 5 or 10 pounds of muscle on your body and I don't put any body fat or minimal amount of body fat on there, you will actually go leaner on the on your body fat percentage. So you actually go from 25% down to 24 or 23%. So I think that's the misconception is a lot of times people think that the only way to get leaner is to lose, lose, lose. And that's why they get into this rat race of cutting calories, creating activity, which tends to serve them early on in their journey, but it leads to a hard plateau. A much better approach and strategy is, hey, let's get leaner, but let's do it by building muscle first because that is metabolically advantageous. You building muscle is going to speed your metabolism up. It's going to mean that your body needs more calories for your current frame. So you can actually focus on building muscle and actually get leaner at the same time. So what that will look like to a person is a change of body composition. They will look leaner. They will feel leaner. Their body fat percentage will go down. But the scale might stay the same or even go up. And that's where th this is where the the psychological part or the challenges for a lot of people because if you get a client and we're using the number like 25%, but let's use a higher percent, like 30, 35%. This person has got a lot of body fat on them. And they come to you and they want to lose. You telling that person that the scale could go up or maintain does not sound good to that person. They're like, I need 30 pounds or more off of me. I want a lower body fat percentage. So as a trainer you had to learn how to communicate to them that, listen, I'm going to get you leaner. Just the approach that you've been taught or that you've heard is a good strategy, which is cutting your calories and running is not a good strategy and will lead to a hard plateau and inevitably you giving up and not being able to sustain that. A much better strategy is actually if we go build muscle because I'm going to increase your metabolism at the same time as leading you out and you building muscle. That is the ultimate place to be and the ultimate place to start, even though when you look at it from somebody who is married to the scale, it's really tough to get that person to, to wrap their brain around that because they see themselves as, I'm fat. I need to lose weight. I, they look at the scale and they go, I'm 30 pounds, 50 pounds higher than my college weight or whatever. They have this arbitrary number in their head that they want to be and they're paying me to get them down to that number and then here I am saying I want you to add calories or I don't really care about the scale uh, that's tough and it's tough for people to and for sure what will happen on this video is we'll get comments ah, you know be freaking out what the guy wants to tell people to lose weight but he's telling them to eat maintenance calories or a surplus that's terrible like no that's that's the way to do it there's so many other benefits, like mental benefits that come with building muscle too, like outside of just the, the fat loss component, so many longevity benefits of building muscle too. And I think that people, they get confused when it comes to building muscle. They're like, all right, do I need to go in and do circuit training? Do I need to go in and do like a one body part a day split? Do I need to go in and do full body? What's your like no BS approach to building muscle? You know, this is funny because... <clears throat> Obviously, it doesn't serve me. I'm in the business of selling people training programs, but I'm going to tell you it's not that complicated. It's not that hard. We overcomplicate this. And the mistake that we make, I think, a lot of times is doing too much again, thinking that more is better. The more I exercise, the more I train, the more I push, the more results I'm going to get. It doesn't work that way. You First of all, you have to understand when it comes to building muscle, the lifting weights to it, all you're doing there is you're breaking down, you're sending a signal to the body that it's basically, it's got a stress. It's going, oh my God, what are these things that we're lifting up and down? This is new to me. I need muscle to do this. If he's going to keep doing this to me every day, the part of the adaptation process is that you go in there, you stimulate, you cause a stress. The body then goes, hey, we need muscle. Well, here's a problem though. The body may say, hey, we need muscle, but if you as a client don't give it the nutrients it needs to build that muscle, then it just hears that loud signal and you don't give it the building blocks to go do it, which also causes a hard plateau and which is also caused by doing too much, 
not feeding the body adequate, not giving it adequate recovery. And so there's a delicate dance of how much we want to stimulate, how much we want to stress with also feeding it properly in order to do that. And what does that look like? It actually looks a lot simpler than you think. In fact, we were just talking about this today on our show. We would literally solve the obesity epidemic. By the way, this will create, this will get clipped and then we'll get all kinds of debate about this. We would solve the obesity epidemic if we could just convince the world to exercise two days a week, full body routine. That's it. Literally one exercise per muscle group, full body, twice a week, literally nothing else. That right there would literally solve our obesity epidemic. Would that mean everybody would be in the best shape of their life? No, I'm not saying that. But lifting two times a week, a full body routine, one lift per muscle group, okay, two times a week, is enough to build a, a incredibly healthy, strong, fit body. And then, heaven forbid, you pair that with walking a little bit and some activity throughout the week, and you're going to have an incredibly healthy person, especially if they balance that out with a high-protein, good whole food diet. Like, it's literally, it's that simple, yet that difficult, right? It's the hard, the most difficult part about it is sticking to it, being consistent with it, and not overcomplicating it, and then in doing it every day. Because what gets difficult is you see that, okay, this guy's telling me I only need to lift this much, and I'm, and then all I got to do is eat whole food and hit my protein intake, right, and eat whole foods. I, I don't need to weigh. I don't got to measure. I don't got to track like crazy. I just need to eat these whole foods. I need to get my protein intake and then lift two times a week. That's all I got to do. And then they start doing it. And the results don't come fast enough. And then they start tweaking and they start messing with things. Oh, my God, it's too much food. Oh, my God, I'm not doing enough activity. You know, And they start doing more, thinking that more is going to get them there faster. And sometimes, this is why this is difficult, sometimes in, in, a, in a temporary one to two week, maybe three week window, it might serve them. More activity, more calorie burn. Oh, they might see the scale go down a little bit. They might feel a little bit better because they're doing more, they're exercising more. And so in their head, they start going like, oh, this is the right way. Okay, more, more, more. And they keep going that path. And then the inevitable happens. Right. And I don't know what the current stats are as far as people who are overweight, pre-diabetic, obese in the U.S., but I know it's gone up and I know it's like way higher than it needs to be. So you're right. I think the average person is overweight and obese, right? Doing a full body workout twice a week is going to see amazing benefits i think people can even be confused with this when they hear full body it's like well does that mean i just go in and i can just do like a leg extension for my legs i can do like bicep curls for like so what i'm getting okay, at you, you could let me simplify it even further for you then because i see where you're going yeah right? to make sure that somebody's being effective with i'll these be workouts. even i'll even be even more straightforward even more simple even more basic and you i promise you like, like we could literally look at like the big five lifts right Squat, deadlift, bench, row, overhead press. We could, instead of even looking at it like a, a full body routine per muscle, let's not even look like that. Let's do those five lifts, practice those five lifts two times a week. So you literally go in, you do each one of those lifts for three sets. Three sets of somewhere between five reps and 15 reps. You choose. You can stick to five for a while then change the 10, then change the 15. We can get into the why you want to undelay, why that's like really complicating things, like simplifying it as, as easy as possible. This is what I tell my my mother, my father, my, my family members that I'm trying to get in the gym. Like, here's the five lifts. Practice them two times a week, three sets of each of them. Five reps or 15 reps, you choose. You're feeling strong that day, lift heavy, lift five reps. Oh, you're not feeling so strong that day, lift 15 reps. You're somewhere in the middle, lift 10 to 12 reps. Literally follow that advice on those five lifts two times a week, and I promise you, you will actually, and paired with eating whole foods, hitting your protein intake, and you will build a physique. And so I think what once people get going with a routine like this, eventually, with if they don't increase their intensity or increase the weight, they're going to kind of plat I think plateau over time like what's your advice for the people that have already you know they're they're getting started on what we're talking about 
but they're wanting to make sure that they're increasing the intensity over time to continue to build muscle. So here's here's a, okay. Progressive overload is important to building muscle. Okay, that's what you're that what you're alluding to. And if you're going to continually see progress inside the gym, building strength and building muscle is important. That's progressive overloading. Now there, we've done an episode before where I think we did the nine different ways to progressively overload. You can slow down tempo. You can add weight. There's a lot of different ways that you can progressively overload the body. But the truth is that if you go in, you practice those lifts I, those lifts I said with the intent of trying to get stronger, you will naturally progressively overload, meaning the first two weeks that Doug did squats, he could only do 135. But by week three, you felt strong enough you could do 150. So you put 150 on the bar. You are now increasing your volume. That's progressive overload. So you are now overloading the body. You are now going to get stronger. You are now going to adapt, and you're going to go through. You're going to continue through that plateau. Now, we could talk about what happens months down the road of consistently eating well and training, and now you're starting to hit hard. But really, for the first year to two years, most people are strength training. They see a pretty good, pretty good, not exactly linear progress, but you know, I'd say month over month. Looking at those lifts, most people can add a few pounds to the bar every month for a good year or two. It's after that. Things get more complicated when you become more advanced and you've already built a healthy, strong physique. Now you're trying to get a cover of a magazine physique. You know what I'm saying? Like there's levels to this. And I think part of why the general population gets so discouraged is because a majority of the coaches, trainers, influencers, YouTube stars – that are communicating health and fitness to the general population are really speaking to themselves. Like the advice they need and where they're at in their fitness journey, they're like super advanced. They've been lifting for five or 10 years and they want to get in all the nuances of the, the latest study and the sciences of all the different ways to progressively overload and debate which way is better to undulate your training. Like, dude, for the person who is trying to get healthy and fit and has never trained consistently for one year, you give them those five lifts and you tell them to practice it and you tell them, hey, try and get stronger, try and add a little bit of weight. Not a lot, not crazy. Add a little bit every time you go to do that lift. And I'm going to show you somebody who continually sees progress in their physique.